time to get done with the pleasantries because like the McDonald's McRib, we are back for episode two. <laughs> Welcome to Faculty Feud, back by popular demand. I am in quarantine. I'm your host. Uh, <laughs> also still looking for a full-time job. So if anybody wants to send a taping of this over to NBC, <laughs> I'd be thankful for all the support. However, first, I think it's time we meet the accounting team. So the captain, Professor Feldman, you lead all off. Right. All right, so I am Diane Feldman, and I want to know what twisted sense of humor in the dean's office thought that accountants versus philosophers was going to be entertaining. But we shall see. Okay, should I just go on? Yep, go for it. So I'm Carlo Gallimberti, and I was wondering exactly the same. Plus, I'm wondering why I am so lucky to be here tonight <laughs> among all the accounting professors that are available out there <laughs> uh, well uh, hello i'm professor quinn and uh i'm kind of wondering the same thing carlo i think everyone else took one giant step back and we were just on the front line oh, perfect <laughs> Sorry, Hello, now. I'm Alvis Lowe. I'm known for doing debits and credits, but I'm <laughs> known for making jokes. So I, I, I'm with, you know, <laughs> with the, my teammates. I don't know why I, I am asked to be here, but I'll try my best. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's me. perfect. But now, Portico team, Professor Evans, you're the captain. You lead it off. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I'm Jeremy Evans, and I'm wondering how badly we're going to beat these bean counters. That's what I want to know. Mm. <laughs> I, um, I'm, <laughs> I am Rachel Spooner. I'm a Portico and business law professor. And this is Quincy, more importantly, who is the Portico team mascot. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, I'm uh, Michael Smith, and I apologize. There's a lot of noise going on in the background here. I've got a, a baby, a cat, and a dog uh, sort of <laughs> bring around in the background. So I hope they're not too much of an interruption. And I'm Melissa Fitzpatrick. I also teach Portico, but I've taught philosophy too at BC for a while. And I don't know if I don't have a question. I do wonder why I'm here. I don't know that I have much to offer. So I'm nervous, but also kind of excited. So well, nobody should be nervous. Just remember, Dean Graff assembled you all here today for a very specific reason. And that's to entertain the people. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with a coin flip question. Team captains, Professor Feldman, Professor Evans, this one's on you. We're gonna to go to that coin flip question after I explain the other rules and you're gonna enter the best answer in the chat. Uh, whoever answers more correctly will get control of the board for the first question. And then beyond that, we move to regular gameplay. Uh, 10 questions, five answers on the board based on the survey of the students. Whoever is up from each team will have 10 seconds to give their answer. Uh, you have five answers to guess on the board, three strikes to give. When those three strikes are up, we will go to the next person on the other team for a 15 second chance to steal those points on the board. If that is incorrect, those points will remain with the team who started the question. I would also just like everybody to know, uh, Dean Sullivan has informed me in the chat that bets are flying in the Dean's office right now in Portico, uh, minus 150 favorites in this game so far. So let's see if Vegas knows what's going on. <laughs> Uh, that hurts. I think that hurts to keep up. So without further ado, let's move on to that coin flip question. So for control of the board in the chat, Professor Evans, Professor Feldman, name an area of study that students find challenging. <laughs> Professor Feldman first on the board with no faith in her own discipline. <laughs> <counting>. <laughs> And that's going to play uh, right off the bat. Yes. Professor easy. Evans. Make it hard. That's Professor not Evans followed up with statistics. We might as well see if that's on the board. Oh, it's number two. Show me statistics. Are you oh. kidding me? Not you didn't even make the board? Board. Apparently, people understand statistics. People that are not me. I'd like, to, I'd like to see the data on this. It yeah. separates the game show hosts from the rest of the students. They must understand statistics. But... Irregardless of the fact, time to move on. Let's get to that first question. And accounting team, Professor Feldman, after the music plays, name a place off campus where students like to eat. Um. Uh, Pinos. 
Pino's Pizza. Yeah. Uh, and oh, tonight, Professor Gallenberti. Eagles Nest. And <laughs> I don't even know if that did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's what I meant, exactly. We'll take it. <laughs> Quinn. Um, oh, City Side. Oh. It's my not even there. <laughs> Unfortunately, not on the board. One strike left, four answers on the board. Professor Lowe, a place off campus students like to eat. Fish Shad. Uh, oh! <laughs> and he's not going to play tonight. So, Professor Evans, four answers to steal the points on the board. 15 seconds. Name a place off campus that students like to eat. I'm going to go with uh, Crazy Dough. Crazy Dough Pizza. Uh, Woo! Nah, come on. Well, let's see what's on that board. Number one. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Barcelona Ooh. Wine Bar, great first date spot. Also, I hear a very classy spot to get broken up with that. So we can go with <laughs> it. Oh, I was going to say that. And pliables, if you're thinking about being healthy. But apparently not as important as El Pallone. So I say we move on to that second question. And Professor Spooner, after the music plays, what is something besides students and faculty that you can find in Fulton Hall? Advisor. Advisors. Apparently the survey says otherwise. Professor Smith, two strikes, a lot of answers. Um, something? Classrooms. Classrooms. Uh, Survey says no. Professor Fitzpatrick, five answers, only one strike left to give. Uh, vending machine. Mm. Uh, uh, vending machine oh is not COVID friendly, <laughs> so that is not going to fly on this survey. Professor, oh five, five answers on the board to steal whatever points you can find here. I'm going to say the bean counter. <laughs> points for the accounting team. Wow. Let's wow. see what else is on that board that was missed. Books. Can't have class without books. Coffee. Also can't have class without coffee. Recruiters. Oh, constantly. 24-7. <laughs> and study spaces. Because, again, we're all students here. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Portico, back to you, Professor. No, never mind. I was wrong. We are on the accounting team again because they just stole those points. So, question three, Professor Gallenberti, after that e music plays, which dorm is the best dorm on campus? Oh, Jesus. Um, Vander Bell. <laughs> Now, while Vanderbilt was a railroad tycoon, he did not have a dorm named after him at Boston College. So <laughs> Professor Quinn, two strikes on the board, a lot of answers. I'd have to say the mods. Yes. The mods are going to fly, even though it is not technically a dorm, just a series I know. of putts. But the survey says yes, so we're going to go with it. Professor Lowe, four answers, two strikes left to give. Uh, I only know Walsh, but I don't know whether, you know, like... <laughs> Oh, wow. No air conditioning, flooding in rats. Walsh is a nice place to be. Professor Feldman, three answers, two strikes. I prepped with two dorms. They were the Mods and Walsh. I do not know the name of another dorm. I know there's a Vander Leaf Cliff. That can't count. That was right. Vander Leaf is her answer. <laughs> Vander Leaf could have potentially been a Viking back in the day. But again, not a dorm on campus. Damn. Professor Gallenberti, one strike, three answers left on the board. What do you think uh, that could be? Is Thayer Hall a dorm? Or? Thayer Hall is a dorm and does, in fact, happen to be on Boston College's campus. Let's see if it's in that survey. Oh. It is not, which means, Professor Evans, team captain, back to you, three potential dorms that students like to live in to steal those yeah. on the board and give Portico some juice. I'm going to go with uh, 2K with 2000 come out. I'm going with 2K. Bottom of the list, but 2K will play. Congratulations. You have stolen those points from the accounting team.
But let's see what those other two dorms were. 2150. Like a hotel. Can't beat that. Not really a dorm, is it? And Chevy. Crazy pick as far as I'm concerned, but I guess the survey doesn't lie. Chevy, fourth most popular dorm on campus as far as faculty feud is concerned. So let's see where we're at as far as scores. The accounting team, 45 points, but they are trailing the Portico team by 20 points, and they're 65 total points, three questions in. A lot of game left. We got a close one here today. Let's see what's going to happen. After, of course, everybody's favorite part of the night, the Patagonia raffle. Holiday shopping not going as you'd like as you can't walk into stores and try things on? Throw your name into the chat. Win a Patagonia vest or sweater. I don't know what they're giving out, but I'm pretty sure it's got a Carroll School logo on it. Impress those special people in your lives with a Patagonia raffle item that you win tonight on Faculty Feud. Can't beat it, so keep putting your names in that chat. And while they're doing that, question four, Professor Spooner, after the theme music plays, Name something you would see at a Boston College football game. Football player? A football player. Unfortunately, the survey says otherwise, which seems a little crazy to me, but I guess that's a recount. (laughs) All of the votes are on a ship off the coast of Maine or something. (laughs) Just crazy. (laughs) <laughs> okay next professor smith 10 seconds on the clock i'm gonna go with alumni Ooh, good one. Oh. Oh, the stadium is named for alumni apparently you will not be seeing any inside professor fitzpatrick a lot of answers on the board only one strike left am i allowed to say beer yeah i don't see yeah. why not. <laughs> yes you are yes. Yes. Better than a oh. on the heights at a football game you can't beat it professor evans Let's pick up some momentum here. Four answers, one strike. I'm going to go with fans. I'm going to go with... Fans is going to play. Not right now, but any other time in history. All right. Well, All right. Professor Spooner, one strike left, three answers. Let's see if we can keep it rolling here. Cheerleader? No. The survey says otherwise, which means, Professor Quinn, Uh-oh, three sorry. answers on the board with a chance to steal. What's how about music? how about the BC marching band? Yes. BC marching band. Or band. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna play. Yeah. The accounting team with the steel. Let's see what was remaining on that board. Number one. Oh, oh man. Timeless classic. And number four. Uh, red bandana. Oh, that's a good one. You can't beat the red bandana on campus. A lot of game left. Getting tight, but. Professor Lowe, after the music plays, name something that you have that a roommate might ask to borrow. Earplugs. No, not earphones on the survey, which is quite interesting because I would probably do that. Professor Feldman, a lot of answers, two strikes to give. Charger. That's going to dance tonight, Professor Gallimberti. Um, uh, shampoo. Not shampoo. One strike <laughs> left on the board, Professor Quinn, four answers. How about your eagle ID to charge food? Eagle ID. Oh, I am sorry, but not tonight. Professor Smith, four answers, 15 seconds to steal. Something that a roommate may want to borrow. Jacket? Jacket. It's an article of clothing, and that's going to dance. Portico picking up those points. Well done, Professor Smith. But let's see what was left on that board. Scissors. Seems a little crazy to be a Calculator. Always need a calculator to do certain things. A hair dryer. Can't go anywhere without a hair dryer. And if you don't have one, you might as well take one from your roommate. So Portico <laughs> the steel and the board right back in their possession. So Professor Fitzpatrick, after the music, name one way you would get in touch with a friend. Smoke signals, I will tell you, not an answer on this board. Uh, iPhone? Phone? Oh. It's 
Sorry. Phone? iPhone? <laughs> Phone call. That's going to work tonight. Professor Evans. I'm going to go with text. The text also going to play. Professor Spooner. No strikes used yet. A lot of momentum. Snap. Snapchat. That is also going to play. Professor Smith. A lot of free play here. Three strikes to give. Facebook. Facebook is not going to be an answer. However, two strikes, Professor Fitzpatrick. Two answers remaining on that board. Instagram. Instagram. Not Instagram. Okay. Professor Evans. One strike, two answers. So stay alive here. Email. Email. It is not going to be email, which means Professor Lowe, 15 seconds, two answers for the steal for the accounting team. Uh, not, uh, like, they just shout. <laughs> <laughs> just shout at each other. Not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> not on the survey. Those points are going to be going to the Portico team, but let's see what those two remaining answers were. Uh, FaceTime. Face uh, phone call. Zoom? All right. In Zoom. Everybody loves Zoom. You can't beat it. I don't it. believe anyone's getting on Zoom when they... <laughs> never know. You might really need to talk to someone. But accounting, board is back in your favor. So name a favorite BC student tradition. Professor Feldman, after the theme music plays, you're up. Okay, senior week? Is that a... Senior week. Oh, <laughs> And certainly not Professor Gallimberti, a favorite BC tradition. Uh, making fun of accountants. <laughs> making fun of accountants. <laughs> Maybe not top five, but I could see it being top six potentially. Professor Quinn, one strike, a lot of answers on the board. Uh, I'm going to have to say watching or going to the Boston Marathon. Marathon Monday. <laughs> BC students' favorite, yet likely least remembered tradition every year, <laughs> Marathon Monday. Professor Lowe, one strike left to give, four answers on the board. Celebrating St. Patrick's Day. St. Patty's Day, another great day on campus. <laughs> not going to be in the survey. So Professor Spooner, four answers for the steal, 15 seconds. Can you claim some of those points for the Portico team? Tailgating? Tailgating. Be. That's going to dance. That's more points for Portico after the steal. Well done, but let's see what was remaining on that board. At three, the red bandana run. At four, living in a mod. Timeless tradition. And at number five, convocation. Really a great time. Unless it's too warm or it's raining. You can really miss if you're outside. Either way, great tradition. Great picture opportunity. So, Score update. Let's see where we're at. Accounting still at 95 points. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Who would have thought the philosophers? Nobody. 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 With three questions left, let's see if we're going for an upset here when we get to question eight. So, Professor Smith, after the theme music plays, after you were to take a selfie, what might you do with it? Snapchat? Snapchat it. Snapchat social media, that works. Professor Fitzpatrick. Oh, geez, that's like a sweeping category. Um, send it to a lover. Ah, romance is in the oh. air. <laughs> that counts. Oh, <laughs> Professor Evans. I'm going to go with put a filter on it. Ah, put a filter on it. Nice. Edit it. All right. That would be All considered right. editing. Portico team is hot. Professor Spooner, no strikes. Two answers left. Um, 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 edit it. Um, delete it. Yeah. Ah, delete yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. 
gifts like this, yeah. you're taking a lot of pictures and deleting them right after. So, <laughs> Professor Smith, to round it out for those 100 points, three strikes, still to give, one answer left. What to do after a selfie? Save it? Uh, Save it. Yeah. Yes, nice. sir. That is a full 100 points for the Portico team. Well done. Counting, you got a lot of ground to cover here. Jacob, uh, Jacob I just want to say that clearly we chose the accounting professor profession because we are not necessarily people. People. Is it not necessarily what? People. People. <laughs> people, people. Oh, people, people. <laughs> you may have grounds for a complaint here, but again, I'm just a student. I'm the face of this crazy train that we're on. I hold no real power here, so your complaint's going to fall on deaf ears tonight. <laughs> Sorry about that, Professor Feldman. But Could I please get a lease question? <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? We might bring you guys back at some other point, but the game is still within reach for everybody. Don't right. worry just yet. Two questions and a bonus. All right. Professor Feldman, you actually have control of the board as well. So after the music plays, what are the top reasons for a student to be late to class? Buses are running late. Buses are running late. As a Newton kid myself, I know that all too well. Let's see if it's on the board. It is on the board. Professor Gallimberti. Um, sleepy in. Sleeping in. Also very common occurrence. Professor Quinn. Uh, I was going to say they couldn't find their phone. Could not find their phone. <laughs> Not in the survey. Professor Lowe, two strikes to give, three answers on the board. They, they had an interview. Oh, they had an interview. Good one. They had to give an interview, but that is not on the board tonight. Professor Feldman, one strike, three answers. All right. I've actually had students use this as a legitimate excuse. Um, their cell phone dip battery died, and so their alarm did not go off. The alarm did not go off. Oh, come on. Sorry, but not tonight. <laughs> Professor Fitzpatrick, this is to really widen that gap and potentially put a nail in accounting's coffin. Three answers on the board, 15 seconds. What do you think? Um, because they're hungover. Oh. Because they're hungover. Oh, okay. A lot of goody two shoe students answering oh, this survey this week. Let's see what's there. Oh. Getting a coffee. Oh, these are a lot of technology issues. Uh, that there. was lost your phone was technology. Yeah. yeah lost real. track of time. Because they're hungover. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't make the rules. I'm just the pretty face that they put in front of the camera. We can keep the sparring until after the competition. But question 10, Portico, board is back in your favor. Name a food most often cooked in the microwave. Professor Evans, team captain, when the music plays, you're up first. Burrito. A burrito. Not on the survey. Professor Spooner. Ramen. Ramen. Of course. Very easy. Timeless classic. Professor Smith, something to cook in a microwave. Popcorn. Popcorn is going to play. Professor Fitzpatrick. Oh, geez. I was going to say cup of noodles. Is that different from ramen? Is it? <laughs> um, uh, okay, frozen. Wait, what did what did somebody else say? Frozen burrito? Did that already go? <laughs> it did already go. I got a feeling we're running out of time. Uh, sorry, technical difficulties everywhere. Sorry. Everyone. And there it is. Time issue. No answer given. However, Professor Evans, one strike left. Three answers on the board. This is to get some more points for the Portico team. Uh, sorry, can I get a lifeline here? Uh, call a friend. Uh, no, you cannot. That is a different board game or game show. I'm going to go with Hot Pocket. Hot go with Hot Pocket. Did we get that in under the bell? That was just under the bell. Oh, come on. People are eating Hot Pockets. <laughs> sorry, but... I guess leftovers? I don't know. Buzzer yeah, sounded. I can't do anything about it, which means accounting team, and I believe Professor Gallimberti, you are up. 
for the steal. This is for some yep. much needed points for the accounting team. Something to cook um, in the microwave. Hot pocket. Hot pocket. <laughs> you just said that. Yeah. But that was that was that was invalid. It was invalid. The buzzer went off. So hot pockets. Let's see if it's on the board. No. Oh. What? Oh. It does seem like is it? they are eating hot pockets. What are they eating? I ate a lot of hot number one. Let's see what number one is. Ah. Mac and cheese. Come on, guys. In the microwave? Yes. Why did I think of that? Pizza. Yeah, I was going to say pizza. Oh, pizza. Frozen dinner. Frozen dinner. Oatmeal. 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 Oatmeal in the microwave. Another timeless classic if you're trying to stay healthy, but I do prefer that easy mat. All right, <laughs> 10 questions. Let's give a score update before we move in to the final bonus round of the game. <laughs> I, uh, accounting, there it is. I was keeping track and lost track. Accounting at 155 points. Portico. 410 <laughs> points as we move into the bonus question. However, it's not just 100 points up for stake this week because we are changing up the rules a little bit Ooh. in our second iteration of Faculty Feud. This week for the bonus question, not only are 100 points on the board, but you will have an opportunity to wager anywhere between one and the full house of what you've got to add on to those 100 points should you get the question correct. However, should you get that question wrong? Those points are gone, so be very smart. Oh. And remember, counting 155 total points, Portico, 410. We might need a miracle. However, we'll see if we can get it. So the rules for the final question, both team captains, Professor Evans, Professor Feldman, you will have 30 seconds for your team to send you texts or chats about what they think the answer to the final question is. And when those 30 seconds are up, uh, Professor Evans from Portico, you will tell me what your team is going to wager and what your answer is. And then Professor Feldman, you will do the same thing. We will reveal the answer. And if you are right, you, if you are the Portico team is right first, they will get those points plus the hundred points and the wager that they make. If they are wrong, they lose those points as they are leading right now and have control. And then if counting's right, they get the hundred points plus whatever they wager. So 30 seconds starts. The second this next slide goes, Name a board game that many DC students played as a child. Consult with each other in the chat. And in 30 seconds, we'll see who's walking away with a victory tonight. <laughs> Are you getting that, Diane? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I might be wrong. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I heard a buzzer. Did you hear that car horn? I think I heard that buzzer. That means those 30 seconds are up. So really? Professor Evans, yeah. what is the Portico team wagering tonight? Well, obviously we're going to say for business ethics reasons, Monopoly. <laughs> what again? Was that? Monopoly. Uh, that's, my, the... that's my final answer. Monopoly. <laughs> no, but what's Why Professor you... Evans? I need your wager too. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We are wagering nothing. That's, we're staying firm. We are wagering. Okay, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> and Monopoly. Okay. <laughs> Threw me for a loop there. My fault, my fault, yes. Oh, no worries. Professor Feldman, your wager and your answer. Uh, I think we need to go all in. All in. Oh. My team gave me games, board games from the 1980s, so I'm <laughs> struggling here. Um, That's rude. Unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> <necessarily> rude. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think I liked one suggestion. Let's go with uh, Risk. 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 That is a very old game. It is. <laughs> the house. It's almost not play that game. All right. Hey, but that's the business see. game. Who's right? <laughs> so what is that final answer? Oh, oh, 
Adding you insult to you do it, Portico. Hundred. That's how. That's how you do it, Portico. We should have wagered. We should have bet it all. I know. <laughs> that is going to be the end of our game tonight in an outcome that nobody would have expected. No, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> Philosophy and ethics has beaten the accounting. accounting in corporate America in a matchup for the ages. Portico with a final score of 510 points, accounting with a measly 155. And that is going to be the end of the game. However, we do have time for one quick plug. And it's a commercial for the Shea Center's accelerator program. According to Crunchbase, $6.7 billion has been raised by BC founders, many of which got their start in accelerators like Y Combinator and Techstars. Apply to Accelerate at Shea to get the resources you need to become a successful entrepreneur and launch your business. Check out their Instagram at Start at Shea to learn more. And I hate to say it, but a great game tonight, nothing until the spring semester. So for myself, everybody at the Carroll School and everybody that's taken part in Faculty Feud, we'll see you at the end of January, maybe the beginning of February. It's been a pleasure. Hope everybody enjoys the holidays and congratulations again to the Portico team for winning. But thank you everybody for participating tonight. See you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.